Before introducing you to the next member on the Murdoch mural, I want to talk a little bit about Flagstaff and its history. Just like every city in the United States, our history is not as stellar as we think it is sometimes. So let's join Mr. Cullen down by the train tracks. Right, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the ugly past of Flagstaff. We have to have the courage to talk about that so we know that we don't repeat history. Here's a good example in Flagstaff. If you had a house on that side of the tracks, north side of the tracks, you were not allowed to sell it to a person of color on this side of the tracks. If you had a house on this side of the tracks, the north side, it was actually written in your deed of ownership prior to 1950 that you were not allowed to sell that property to a person of color, which meant that if I wanted to buy a house, I couldn't sell it to you. But luckily we had courageous people here in Flagstaff, and we'll talk about them as the, as the announcements go on, uh, that were able to break that cycle. And as Flagstaff continues to grow, uh, I hope you continue to grow as well. But it's important that we're always conscious about our past and making sure that we move forward on a positive note. And now back to you, Mr. Cullen. Before announcing tonight's person on the Murdoch mural, I want to give you a clue to see if you can guess. Alas, poor York. I knew him well. Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest. Have you guessed yet? Have you? Have you guessed yet? Let me introduce you to Mr. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, of which the famed Dunbar School was named after. It was built in 1927 and operated until 1952, as segregation in Flagstaff finally ended. Mr. Dunbar's claim to fame was the hopes of becoming a career in journalism, but his hopes were dashed after college and he began a career as an elevator operator. But he was able to write a book of poetry and was published in a second book in 1896. And finally, he's regarded as one of the leading African-American writers of the 20th century and wrote the lyrics of the first all-black comedy on Broadway in 1903. The play In the Homey, starring Burt Williams and George Walker, was about two con men who found a pot of gold and devised a plan to colonize Dahomey, a city in Africa, with a group of poor American blacks. Although Mr. Dunbar was not from Flagstaff, he grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and one of his classmates was Orville Wright. Yeah, that Orville Wright. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, of whom the famed Dunbar School was named after in Flagstaff.